Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 40 in the FreeCAD series. Today I'm going to model this rim. Vaguely model, not precisely. This is an old rim I had out in the yard. And uh, I'll be able to show you a couple of things. First of all, how to get an image into FreeCAD that you can use to trace against, how to scale that image, and we'll also look at polar rays in the part workbench. So today I am using 0 0.19 pre-release revision 19.758 on Windows 10. Now let's go to the image workbench. And here we have three toolbar icons. And you don't get you don't get a menu with this workbench. You only get these toolbar icons. We want to use this middle one first and the scale next. So create a planar image in 3D space. And we're going to select our image. Hopefully that's the right one. And I want to put this minus one millimeter. The reason for that is so it's below the sketch. Because we're going to sketch on top of that. Now it's showing all black, but that's no reason to panic. Let's switch to the top view. And I did select the wrong one. Let me delete that. That was uh, that was the wrong one. This is the one I want. This is number six. Try that again. There we are. Ooh, a minus one millimeter. All right. I would prefer this to be rotated. Ninety degrees. All right. Now the next thing to do is to scale it. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a really nice view here of the cross section. It's look at it curves out here and right here. But I'm not like I said. I'm not trying to make this ultra precise. We're just going to vaguely follow these. I'm not even going to constrain that sketch. This is where the uh, inner tube valve stem goes through. Not the inner tube, but the, the valve stem. Which I'm not interested in. Maybe I should flip it another 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Let's go minus 90. And I'm just going to catch off the top there. Okay, so to scale this, I measured across from edge across this way. And it was about 180 millimeters. So we select our, our image plane and tree. We click the scaling tool. And it's going to be 180 millimeters. And I click on here. To tell it how far 180 millimeters he is in this image. All right. So now we're scaled. We'll go to part design, and I'm going to create a new sketch, XY plane. And if I 
If I just draw a line here, and check that measurement <clears throat> in reference mode, it should be about 180, yeah, 173. So, I'm, you know, if I, if I get it just right, it'd be about 180. So I'm happy with this, <clears throat> like I said, this is not a, it's not intended to be an exact uh, model. So we'll use the multi-line tool, polyline tool. And I'm going to start around here somewhere and go up. Like I said, I was not able to get this straight on. But this is going to illustrate what we're trying to accomplish. Now, we, if you press the M key, you can get a variety of different things that you can uh, sketch. And I want this arc right here. And the next edge, I want is something like that. Looks like we have a little, a little ring right there. Pressing M here to get another arc. And here, another arc here. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to come fix that in a moment. Go to tangency constraint there. Like I said, I'm not trying to get exact with this model. Okay, now let's put one here. show you a tool that we haven't shown yet. Hopefully we can get it to work. And that's up above here. Clone, copy, and move. So I want to make a copy of what I have so far. And, and put it down below here. So the way this works your last selected point is going to be a reference. So I am going to deselect this one 
and reselect it. And then I'm going to click on copy. Now come down here a ways. And now we have kind of a copy. And I'm just going to connect these. I don't really like the way these are connected. Let's just see what that's going to look like. Now I revolve this around the horizontal sketch axis. not quite tall enough so what I'm going to do is move the sketch in the Z direction press F5 Chose the wrong direction, I guess. Let's try Y. It's not working. Yeah, what it is. I didn't center the tire vertically. Let's see if I can move that image. I need to move the image up some. Close enough for me. Now, let's try to move all this as one object. Deselect and reselect. And we'll choose move this time. too far. Go down just a hair. Alright, I'm happy with that. Well, that's a little more like it. Let me hide that image. It's hard to tell in this image, but the most most of the meat inside of here is on the bottom. The 
which would be the front. So that's this side here. These tangency constraints are a little wacky sometimes. Like I said, I'm not trying to uh, be precise with this. A good thing too. All right. Let's check geometry on this. Let me save it. This be 040. So we can use the part workbench check geometry on body objects too. 23 faces, no errors. But the main thing I wanted to show was two things. How to get the image in, how to scale it, and how to use this polar array. So we like to make a whole pattern. Let's do this one. This is how many. One, two. Let's start with this. Start with this blue one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have twelve holes out here. So let's make a sketch. This one will be on the YZ plane, isn't it? And we're going to put, let's go into this mode so we can see. I don't know what the actual measurement on that is. All right, and we'll pocket this sketch. And we're going to choose through all. Let's choose symmetric. And this will be a 12 hole pattern. So we choose the polar array and it's going to have 12. Oops, not 22, 12. These holes need to be, I think, up a little higher. So they're a little smaller. And this has some curves, curves to it, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to uh, reproduce that. So 
let's go into this sketch and I'm move this up some say like 90 and make this a little smaller let's say 13 It looks a little more like it. And this has, looks like it's got two different hole patterns. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four. Three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's two different five hole patterns. One's a little closer in than the other. Let's make another sketch. Why is he playing? could make these as two separate patterns, but I don't think it's necessary. Looks like these holes are a little bit bigger. So I'll make that one eight. And I'll make this one nine. Let's see what that's gonna look like. We'll make a polar pattern out of that one. Five hole pattern. There's some artistry required for this, which I am definitely lacking in artistry. Okay, so that's that part. I think we also have a hole in the middle of there, don't we? Mm -hmm. I did not measure that hole. That's going to be another sketch on the YZ plane again. This might be suitable for a toy or something. Alright, 
just pocket that one through all. Now, there is some additional detail. There's a lot of curvature in here, which I didn't I didn't reproduce. If we wanted it, we could add some more some more arcs in here. And that's just an artifact, a rendering artifact. Now let's right click choose appearance. I don't really like the way these look too much. Let's try silver. That looks pretty nice, I guess. If you went into uh, shaded mode, and get rid of that, uh, that seam. So that's our not so good rim. We learned a few things today. Don't let Mark decide, design your rims for your car. That's lesson number one. We will learn how to take an image, put it in the FreeCAD as a background image just to trace against. The better your image, the better your results. And of course, if you had more precise measurements to work with, for these arcs and what have you. So we learn how to do that. We learn a little bit about the whole patterns. And uh, a little bit about choosing the finish, the material type for these finishes. Right click, choose appear uh, appearance. And there's some different options in here. This is stone. What would that look like? That's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.